All right, so this is a 2009 Honda Ridgeline. The issue I've been having is that I can't open the trunk with the button. Excuse the background noise. My neighbors have decided to cut down every tree in their yard. Um, so the first things you want to do here, of course, is confirm that you can open up the key, which I can. The other thing to do is confirm that your, uh, your override switch is not uh, in the wrong position here. So, in, and uh, switch right here. Is, is right here, not sure how good the lighting is, but uh, the switch needs to be in the up position for that to work. So make sure that you've got that in the up position. And then at that point, the button would normally release the uh, trunk, but it's not in this case. So what I've gone ahead and done here is removed the covering by taking out all of these black plastic things here. So release the and release that covering. Okay, so I have previously taken apart the lock assembly here by uh, taking these bolts out and this slides down. And I've already determined that it's the switch inside of here. And I'll tell you one quick way you can tell that is by uh, this cable right here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach up to the top here and push in, and then this whole thing will just pull out. And I'm gonna need two hands for this, so I'll come back in a second. All right, so first thing, you know, when I pulled this plate off here, you have these black plastic things here. You just reach under with a little flathead screwdriver, a pair of needle nose, and those will just give them a tug and they'll, they'll pull out with a little bit of effort. So the next thing is, is after we've got this uh, wire connector out, we've, we've disconnected it by pushing uh, the bottom piece, pulling it apart. Now this is the wire that goes up into the switch and we can test do is we can take just a paper clip, uh, you know, a thin paper clip, un unbend it, and stick it in, short out these two terminals here, and you'll hear that click. So that's the, the lock mechanism working. So we know that everything past this point is okay. If the switch in the, in the front were not in the right position or broken somehow, uh, shorting those two terminals would not open this. So we know that it's simply uh, the switch. Uh, you can take this assembly apart, which we will later. Um, you know, it's possible that it's not hitting the switch inside somehow, but in this case I've determined that it is actually the switch. It's a little micro switch in there, which seems unlikely that the switch would fail, but it has in this case. So we've determined by shorting out these connectors that the mechanism is working okay, which means it's the switch in my case, or something else in the lock assembly for you. The next thing we're going to do is, is undo the lock assembly. This is a, uh, a metric 9 socket, and you're simply, I'm sorry, metric 10, and you're simply going to take out uh, these two bolts on each side, one bolt on each side. All right, so we've taken out, I said bolt in the previous uh, section, but nut is the correct term. I've taken out the two uh, metric 10 uh, nuts. I've yanked on this assembly a little bit. What it reveals is this top rubber crumb, so we're going to go ahead and lift that off. And you'll see on the inside that we've got a couple of things going on here. Um, you've got the actual key mechanism, which connects to this uh, physical cable to go in and override and pull the mechanism. And then you've got this uh, micro switch here. When I push up on the... Sorry about that. When I push up on the rubber button, uh, you'll see it uh, moves a mechanism up and down to push in on the micro switch. Um, I already checked to make sure that that was making good contact, uh, tried to bend the metal piece a little bit, so forth, but this, this switch has just failed at this point. And uh, the other thing you can do too, if you really want to prove that, which we've basically done, but if you wanted to, you could take the other end of the switch, uh, hook up a, an ohmmeter, and then, of course, see if you have continuity when you're, you're pressing the switch. In my case, I do not. All right, so now the million dollar question. What do we do? We've got this failed switch. I can't find a way to buy a similar switch. It's also hardwired. It may be hard to see right here. The wires go into a molded, um, you know, inside the switch they're molded. It goes down into this proprietary Honda uh, connector here. So, 
you know, even if I could find a new micro switch, of course, I'm going to have to cut these cables and attach them to the micro switch. Um, it appears Honda sells this whole assembly, which I'm assuming comes with this switch and the cables. It was somewhere in the area of $100, a fairly expensive fix for this type of problem. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to replace this switch with a uh, just a standard momentary, um, normal, a normally open momentary push button switch and uh, that I got on uh, on Amazon for five or eight dollars. I'll post the link to that switch, um, but really any switch that provides a momentary uh, closed connection uh, will uh, will work. All right, so now it would be great to be able to reuse this mechanism somehow. We have a nice rubber watertight seal here that activates this whole mechanism. Again, if we could find the, the micro switch, then we could, re we could reuse it. Um, I'm sure there are some people clever enough and have enough time to figure out a way to, to reuse uh, this mechanism with an, a different switch. Um, but what I'm gonna do is take uh, this small push button switch and after investigating this for a while, I think what I'm going to do is uh, attempt to just uh, mount it right about here, uh, which should you know, be underneath right here. So rather than pushing on this mechanism in the future, I'll push on the, uh, the button, which will be mounted underneath. Seems to be about the cleanest way that I can figure to do it. I suppose if the switch was lower profile, you might be able to put it right into the back of the trunk here somewhere. Um, but I'm afraid that that's um, going to be too close to the door. I, I got inside, uh, close the back door, and I just don't think there's enough clearance there. And I, I don't want to take a chance in, uh, in drilling the hole. Um, so maybe some people might get luckier and get a little lower profile switch. This is pretty small. I know it's hard to tell from the picture, but it's, it's a pretty small switch. So the plan is going to be to get uh, the right size drill bit and attempt to, uh, to drill a, a hole big enough for this switch so that it will land right about here. And in that case, we'll leave all of this other stuff. Uh, you can see this metal plate is important because it acts as a, a retaining uh, clip for this um, physical cable. So we can't just remove this entire mechanism without compromising that setup. All right, this particular uh, switch that I'm installing requires a 12, meter, 12 millimeter or approximately half inch drill bit. I did not have one. So I just went out and got this Bosch uh, Impact Tough multi, uh, multi-material uh, drill bit. So this is what we'll, we'll use. All right, so at this point, I have drilled the hole and put the switch in. Sorry, the lighting may not be the greatest. At this point, I've just kind of dry fit to make sure that it actually, uh, it actually goes in okay. So next we'll go ahead and work on uh, wiring and so forth. Uh, my plan at this point is to um, connect some 18 gauge, just basically brown um, lamp cord to this. And then I will put some shrink wrap, uh, some heat shrink tubing around it to kind of uh, protect it in. So stay tuned. So in the process of working with this, Looks like I cut away enough of the metal uh, to where the uh, spring and the, the rod that goes through the spring have kind of pulled in, kind of contorted. So my plan now is to remove that, that metal rod with the spring in it and uh, see if I can push those back apart again. All right, so I went ahead and undid the other cable, which goes into a, a lock uh, switch here. Um, and also pulled the uh, physical cable out of its retaining uh, clip here. After doing that, I'm able to get a lot more room here. Uh, undid these two screws, and now this whole metal mechanism is, is accessible. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this pin out and, uh, and, and place it back in without the, the pin in there. So what I've done is gone to cut the, uh, the rivet that was on the end of this pin, so I'm gonna be able to pull it out. Really, I mean, we'd love to be able to remove this whole metal assembly it's just taking up space at this point but it does have this retaining clip on it for the cable so i think it's probably important to put it back in all right so i've taken this switch with my 18 gauge lamp cord um, and just secured the uh, wire to the terminals all right so you can see i've made some pretty substantial modifications here i cut away a lot of that metal bracket 
and uh, screwed it back on and uh, cut the uh, wire off of the micro switch, stripped those connectors, stri stripped those wires, uh, secured in the new switch, and I've got a pigtail of uh, the wire running off of it right now. So now I'll go ahead and um, connect those two uh, sets of wires together. I'll, I'll solder them and uh, heat shrink them together. All right, I've gone ahead and soldered these wires together just using a standard soldering iron. I'm going to actually tape them up individually and then tape them together as a group. Okay, taped up. Um, not my uh, not my best work, but it will do. Gone ahead and put the uh, rubber gasket back on the top. Next, we'll uh, pull these cables back through, uh, take the slack off, bolt this back up, and uh, reconnect those cables. I've got the lock mechanism mounted back up with the, the two nuts on the, each side. You can't, you can't see them very well. You can now see the, uh, the new switch we put in. I've reconnected the blue and the gray cable. And of course, one thing you'll want to do before you close this is to make, use your key. Make sure that the lock mechanism is actually working, the unlock mechanism. And uh, if we test, push the button now, You'll hear that uh, as I push the button, the mechanism is working. So the switch repair was uh, successful. So now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll uh, put this cover plate back on, put all the little uh, push um, pins or whatever they call them back in, and we should be almost done. All right, so we've got everything put back together. Uh, we can safely reach under now and push our button, which is right here. It unlocks and opens. If we stick our key in, we turn it, and opens, which that always worked, but uh, the button did not. So that has been successful. We've got the cover plate back on, all the, the pins put back in, and I hope this has been helpful.